Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. We receive it. It's being written in our heart and mind. Thank you for the revelation you're bringing forth this night. We'll be dearers and doers of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing with you on obedience and set how you need to set your will to choose to do the Word of God. It is absolutely essential. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 9. For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether you be obedient in all things. That's quite a statement. The proof of you, the proof of me, is whether we're obedient in all things. Obedience is imperative in your life if you're going to be approved of God. We see the fact that we have a will that can choose to do what God wants us to do. You must understand Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 indicates, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. We have a will. We can choose. The way of life, the way of death, or the way of blessing, or the way of cursing is set before us. And you and I choose which path we go down. We must make the choice. You have a free will and are responsible for all the choices you make. We see over in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. It's important to understand that you have authority over your will. Otherwise, the devil's not making you do something. You are yielding in some capacity to allow the enemy to work. Look what it says in 1 Corinthians 7, 37. This is talking about the one who is standing steadfast against sexual sin. He says, Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but has the word power, is the word exousia, which means authority. He has authority over his own will. You have authority over your will, and you have a free will, and you can choose one way or the other. And what has he done? He sets his will and decrees in his heart that he will keep his virgin. That's what you need to do on everything of the Word of God. You're going to set your will. You're going, you have authority over it. You're going to decree things in your heart. You're going to do the Word of God in all aspects of life. Now remember, there is a battle that is going on when you're born again. You get a brand new spirit and a new heart, remember? And we see in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say, then walk in spirit. The is not there in the, in the Greek. It's walk in spirit. And you might not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This means is a conditional statement, meaning you have to perform the first part, otherwise you will end up walking in the lust of the flesh because they're working against each other and they're trying to get a control in your life so you'll yield to one or the other. He goes on and says, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. They are contrary or they're set over against and opposite to, they're adverse to one to the other. You never can rely on your flesh. You can never follow the flesh. And the voice of the flesh is your feelings. You never can follow a carnal mind, which is a mindset thinking on what you want without considering what the Word says and submitting it to the Word. And this is the result here is so that you cannot do the things that you will to do. That means you've got to get the Word in you so that then you'll make the choice based on the Word written in your heart and mind that you're going to walk in spirit, be obedient to the Word of God in every situation. Now, regarding our body, Galatians chapter 12, verse 1 tells us, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So you're going to make your body as a living sacrifice, giving it over for what, the God, what God wants, and it's to be holy. You're not going to let any unholiness or ungodliness or sin operate in it whatsoever. Remember, you're not a sinner any longer, and you have now have dominion over all sin, and you can walk free from it. We also see the fact that you and I must come to the place of realizing that you have to yield yourself to what is right in God's sight, as we see in Romans chapter 6, verse 13, where it commands you and me, 
to yield our members as instruments here, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. You are alive from the dead. You have a brand new spirit. You've been born from spiritual death unto spiritual life. And so when it talks about yielding both of these cases, this is a command to you and me. Imperative mood, you are commanded to yield yourself to God and your members are to be yielded as instruments of righteousness unto God. That you're only going to yield your members, all your faculties, unto that which is right. We saw the scripture here also in verse 16. Know ye not to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey. This is because of who you're yielding to. You're actually yielding to a spiritual authority over you. To whom? You could be yielding to God or you could be yielding to the devil. You're his servants to obey. His servants you are to whom you obey. Whether of sin, which would be yielding to the devil, doing something contrary to the word, it produces death. Or of obedience, which is obedience to the word, that produces righteousness. God expects you and I to yield ourselves, all of our members, unto obedience to the word, producing fruits of righteousness. And he says in Romans 6, 19, I speak after the manner of men because of the weakness of the flesh, this means, that as you've yielded your member servants to uncleanness in the past before you got born again, and to lawlessness, this is the word anomia, meaning lawlessness, which produces more lawlessness, whatever you yield to it, it increases it. Even now, even so now, yield your members servants to righteousness, and what does that produce? Unto holiness. God expects us now to yield our members to obedience that produces righteousness, and then as you do that, it will produce holiness. This is a command, because you and I are to be holy before Him. So your will is involved in you ever coming to the place of being holy, because you've got to set your will to choose to do what the Word says, to be obedient to the Word, to bring forth the fruits of righteousness that produces the holiness in your life. Now, we talked about many areas the last time. We're not going to go through them again, but many things about how we need to set our will to choose to do the Word of God. One area that's important, especially, that we'll just reiterate, is the area of your mind. It is mandatory that you get your mind to be governed by the Word of God. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, Casting down imaginations, or mental reasonings, and every high thing that exalts itself or is raising itself in an estimation against the knowledge of God, trying to get you to yield to it instead of what the knowledge of God is. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. As you learn to govern all your thoughts, you are then going to stop yielding your mind to sin. You won't be yielding to any evil things. You're to bring into camp there be every thought because the devil will bring thoughts, try to bring them against you. Well, you need to be bringing in a line in obedience of Christ, so it would have to be in line with the word that you're going to do. And you're to be ready, prepared and ready, this means, to revenge all disobedience. All negative thoughts are disobedience coming at you, trying to get you to yield to it. And it's going to happen when your obedience is fulfilled. We must choose to do what God wants. Now, if you're going to see this work of God be accomplished and see you come to the place of being obedient and making the right choice, you certainly have to yield yourself to the Lord and you've got to get yourself out of the way, which means you cannot be living unto yourself. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8, speaks about what Jesus did. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Well, that's what you and I have to do. We have to humble ourselves. Get rid of pride, get rid of selfishness, get rid of I, 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 what I want to do. Humble yourself and submit yourself to the Word. And he became obedient unto death. He had to humble himself and submit to what God had for him, which was to go through the avenue of death to accomplish, pay the ransom price, accomplish the reconciliation, get to him who had the power of death, take back the keys of hell and death, accomplish all the works that he were necessary. He was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You know, Jesus had to walk this walk. In John chapter 4, 
in verse 34. Jesus said to them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. You and I are to do the will of God as well, of what he's given us in the covenant relationship and the work that he's called you to do. You need to carry that out. You're to be doing the will of him that sent you. And it's finished the work for him, for us, is going to be to accomplish the work that he wants for us to be doing. Jesus did not walk in his own ways. He totally yielded himself to do what the Word said. John 5, 30 says, I can of my own self do nothing. We can do nothing. It's all God working through us. As I hear, I judge. My judgment's just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. You need to seek the will of the Father in every situation, not your own will. That means you're going to deny yourself, which is absolutely essential. We see in John 6, verse 38, I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Well, you are in the same position. You've been born from above. You're an ambassador for Christ. You are a sojourner, a foreigner, a stranger in this place. You are now to represent him and to carry out the will of God that he wants for you here in the earth. God wants you to understand it's got to be totally submitted and yielded unto him to see God accomplish his work in your life. John 8, verse 29. Look what it says about Jesus. He that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. Why? For I do always those things that please him. If you always do the things that please him, the Father will always be with you, too. He'll be manifesting himself continually. We need to do the things that please him. That means we're not going to please ourselves. We're not going to be a man pleaser either. We're going to be a God pleaser. We're going to put him first place in all things. And this all involves setting your will, that you are going to choose the things that he wants you to do at all times. Also, is your knowing the Word of God and walking in His ways and seeing Him bring forth what He wants? It says in John 7:17, 7, "If any man wills, this is the main verb in this clause, he is willing, and actually it would be he may be continually willing because of subjunctive mood, the way you would translate it. If any man may be continually willing, to do, which is an infinitive, to do his will. Well, that means that's the way you're supposed to start out, that he'll be continually to do his will, an infinitive. That's the first step. You set your will continually, that I am going to be doing his will. What's going to happen for this guy? He shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Why? Because he's going to get revelation. You're going to get revelation when you hear and you do the word and you have heard it with your will set to do it. Always set your will to do what the word says. Anybody who's, he that speaks of himself seeks his own glory. We don't speak of ourselves. We only speak of the things of the word of God. We're seeking his glory, not our own. He that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. You and I are going to do what the Word says in every situation. You've got to set your will that you're going to do it. Now, don't fall for any of those lying things that makes you think, well, the devil made me do it. The devil influenced you, but you have a choice. And you have authority over your will. So he may have influenced you, but ultimately you're the one who has to do with that. You've yielded it, you've chosen to it, you spoke it, you walked in that path, you did the wrong thing. He didn't make you, he influenced you. And then also you can't yield to the other line thing that so many do is say, well, I'm willing to be made willing. If you say, I'm willing to be made willing, you just confessed you're not willing. Why would you have to be made to be willing, to be willing if you were already willing? You're supposed to be willing. You've got authority over your will. God's not going to make you willing to be willing. You have the choice. He's telling you what to do. You're to obey his command. So these uh, attitudes that some have, well, I'm willing for God to make me willing. <laughs> That's like a cop-out, putting it all on God, you know. I'm not responsible. Just God has to make me willing. It's a lie. 
You've been given the word. You're to choose. You're to be obedient. He's not going to make you do things. If God was going to make everybody willing to be willing, everybody gets saved. <laughs> but not so. Everybody has a free choice. Everybody has to come to the place of hearing and believing the gospel and acting upon it at the point of their will, being obedient to it. That's what God expects for all of us. Now, we got to also watch that we don't yield to wrong things. And the scriptures tell us many things that are important. Isaiah chapter 65. In Isaiah 65, we come to verse 2. I've spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. Well, those are ones that aren't yielding their will to do the right thing. Which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. That means, if you're walking after your own thoughts, that's a way that's not good. And that's choosing wrong. You don't choose to walk after your own thoughts. You choose to out walk after what God wants and His thoughts are in His Word and He's going to bring His Word up to you and speak to you and show you, and you or you think what the Word says in your mind and you choose to do what the Word says. Therefore, we don't walk after our own thoughts. So you've got to set your will that I'm not going to choose to walk after my own thoughts. I'm going to submit all my thoughts to the Word of God and find out if they're in line with the Word or not. And then I'm going to do what the Word says. If it's not a, wrong, a right thought, I'm going to cast that down, bring into obedience of Christ. I'm going to govern this mind so that I am not about to walk after my own thoughts. Otherwise, I'll be considered a rebellious person. In verse 12, Therefore will I number you to the sword, and you shall all bow down to the slaughter. Your judgment's going to come on them. Why? Because when I called, you didn't answer. When I spake, you did not hear. But you did evil before mine eyes and did choose the thing that wherein I delighted not. We can't be choosing things that he doesn't delight in. We should delight to do the will of God. We saw that scripture. So if we're not doing the will of God, then we might be choosing to do things he delights not in. Things of the world... Nothing of the world is of the Father, remember? So you're not going to choose to, to walk in the ways of the world. That's not a way that he's delighted in. He wants you to choose the things that he delights in. So set your will. You're not going to choose to do anything that God would not delight in. Would he sit down there and watch that program with you on the TV? If not, no way. Or watch that movie or watch any of these, and be hearing or seeing or anything that's out there that would be polluting you? No way. We need to set our will that we're not going to yield those, to those things. Luke chapter 19. In Luke chapter 19, we see over here in verse 12. He speaks about a certain nobleman that went into far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he'd given his servants the, those the pounds to occupy till I came. But it says the citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Well, these are ones who didn't choose to submit to his reign. We cannot resist God's rule and reign. If he is Lord, then he should be ruling and reigning over us. Evidence of that is because we put the word first place, we hear it and do it, we're obedient, in all things, we allow him to be reigning over us. We don't despise lordship, as it talks about what they did, which is a problem. No, we, we like him to be lord, and we want him to direct everything that we do. Well, what, what's going to happen to these guys? Those enemies, the ones who wouldn't submit and wouldn't, wouldn't let him, wouldn't, didn't want him to rule them, over them, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Judgment's going to come on those who will not let the Lord rule and reign over their life. We must put the Word of God first place. You came into a covenant relationship with Him. And remember, you're bought with a price. You're a purchased possession. You're not your own. You, you, you can't walk in your own ways and be right with God. There is no way. So set your will that you're going to submit to His rule and reign over your life. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 26, 
if we sin willfully, we know what we're doing, we know it's sin, we know it's wrong. After that we've received the knowledge, precise, correct knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, just to cover this over or, or deal with this as they did in the Old Testament, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fire indignation. Remember, it talks about how he winked at sin in the past, but now he commands men everywhere to repent. <laughs> you can't walk in the way of sin and not think you're not going to be judged. Just judge that sin has no dominion over you now. Remember, you're not a sinner. Before they were. They didn't have a new spirit. Now, a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fire indignation devours the adversaries. Therefore, we cannot allow ourselves to willfully sin or you're going to be judged. That's reality. God is a just God. He, you got a brand new spirit. You now are not a sinner any longer. You have a righteous spirit. He's brought you into covenant relationship with Him. He's given you His Word, shown you the way. There's no reason why we would sin willfully. Sinning willfully is choosing to rebel against God's Word. We can't do it. We're going to have judgment that will come upon us if we do so. Over in Joshua chapter 5, this is why your will is so important to get it strengthened and get it set that you're going to choose the will of God in every situation. That's why you need to think. What do, before you choose to do something, what does God's Word say about this? I am setting my will to choose the right thing in the sight of the Lord. You need to get that mentality set about you. Joshua 5, 6, For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness. To all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed. Why? These guys were trained up as men of war. Obviously, they had learned a lot of things and heard a lot of things and, and been doing things because that's how they got trained up in that way. But they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. They didn't obey what He told them to do. You see, we've got to obey God in all things and obey what He tells us to do. Unto whom the Lord swear He would not show the land, them the land, which the Lord swear unto their fathers He would give us, a land that floweth with milk and honey. We must choose to obey or we're not going to be entering into the promised land. We also see that bondages came, judgment came on those who didn't choose and set their will to do what was right. Judges chapter 6. Children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them in the hand of Midian seven years, because they kept on being so rebellious continually. And verse 10 declares, I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. They yielded to them. They did the wrong thing. We need to always obey God's voice. Always obey what He tells us. Set your mind, your will, you're going to obey. If not, these guys got delivered into bondage. They were in bondage for seven years. Another thing that's important, we had already talked about how we must have humility. In Luke chapter 20, in verse 46, he said, Beware of the scribes which desire... Their will is to walk in long robes and love greetings in the markets and the highest seats in the synagogues and the chief rooms at the feasts. What were they all about? They were all about themselves. These guys were evil. They wanted to be seen. They wanted to be recognized. They wanted people to look up to them, you know. They wanted people to, to they wanted to be exalted in the eyes of men. All they cared about was their stature. No, you're to be humble. You don't want, you want people to see Jesus, not you. You don't want to be getting the attention on you. The attention should always be, that's why you don't talk about yourself. You talk the Word, and what, the Word of God. So you're, the attention will always be on the Word of God at all times. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. As obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Well, that's when we didn't know. We had lack of knowledge, ignorance. But now, as we get the knowledge of God, we know oh, all these lusts of the flesh, this is sin, this is wrong. And it's warring against us walking in spirit. Therefore, I must be, we must be obedient 
and not allowing ourselves to be fashioned according to the former lusts. Remember, you crucify the flesh daily. You mortify the deeds of the body. You put off the old man and you put on the new man. You got to be ready to put off all these things and deal with every, any lust that would come. And it's all because now you have knowledge. You're not in that status any longer. As you get the knowledge of God, you know what to do and you need to choose to do that. We see over also in Luke, we've got to be obedient in our right attitudes towards people, including all those people that are doing evil things and are doing wrong. Here in Luke chapter 9, verse 54, the disciples James and John saw this and said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? He turned and rebuked him and said, You know no what manner of spirit you are of. <laughs> that was the devil operating through him. The Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Otherwise, we're not going to be judging, calling judgment upon people. We're going to be speaking for them to be repent, come to the place of repentance. You pray for them to print, repent. You don't call for judgment upon them. You're going to bring forth prayer and the Word of God, calling people to come to the place of repentance. Remember, we don't give people what they deserve. We give them what they need. They need to hear the Word. They need to hear the truth. They need to hear that which is going to bring them to the place of repentance, turn away from things and do what is right in God's sight. Otherwise, we don't call people for judgment whatsoever. Don't be judgmental against people. Remember, they're not going to get away with what they've done. Everybody's going to be judged for all the things they've done. You just don't be desiring to see judgment come on them. Instead, you want them to come to repentance. Same time, just know that nobody gets away with anything. Judgment will come upon everyone. We see in Luke chapter 10, verse 29. Here's the guy who here he was willing to justify himself and who's my neighbor. This is the lawyer, if you remember back here, the lawyer who was asking Jesus, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And of course he told him what's been written in the law and he told him you're to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, all your mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Well, he said, yeah, this is, you answered right, do this and you'll live. Well, now the guy wanted to, well, I've got to qualify something here. Willing to justify himself, said to Jesus, who's my neighbor? Only certain ones? <laughs> yeah, that's everybody. And of course, then he goes on and talks about the priest, uh, that, when, that when this guy had been affected by robbers, he'd been bruised and hurt and damaged and stolen from, and the priest came and he just walked by, and the Levite came and he just walked by and the Samaritan came. He had compassion on him and he ended up binding up his wounds. And he's the one that took him to the inn and took care of him and took care of the situation. And so he says, which now of these thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? He said, he that showed mercy on him. Otherwise, we just don't be doing the God's word towards certain people. That makes you a respect to persons. They were a respected person. It was someone maybe that they knew they would have done something for them. But here it was this guy that they didn't know. And so they just ignored the guy. We can't have respected persons. If those people have respected persons, they're not walking in God's ways. You need to choose to do what is right in his sight. They were trying to justify yourself. Well, who's my neighbor? Do I have to do this to everybody? Yes, we're to walk in the same way to everybody. We should not be treating one different from another. God has, is no respecter of persons, and we must be the same way. We're going to show mercy, or we're going to do whatever needs to be done in whatever situation we come across. John 6, verse 66, here's a case where, a situation where the disciples were not going to follow Jesus anymore. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. That's a mistake. They had to choose to do that. We have to choose to not yield to anything that would ever cause us to draw back. And then he said to the twelve, Are you, will you also go away? Are you guys going away too? No. 
You need to always set your will. You're going to do what God wants you to do, period. That's it. Doesn't matter what everybody else is doing or what the crowd's doing or someone else. It only matters what God tells you to do in line with the word, and you're going to choose to do it. Choose to not ever withdraw from Jesus or ever follow a crowd. You'll make a mistake if you do. Always do what the word says. Another thing is we can never choose to go back to the ways of the world just for thinking that that's going to solve our problems. No, you're born from above. You're a citizen of heaven. You're now to walk according to God's ways in spirit in line with the word. Acts 7, verse 39, he speaks of those. To whom our fathers would not obey, but they thrust him from them, and in their hearts they turned back again into Egypt. Egypt's a type of the world. They wanted to go back to Egypt. You and I, we don't go back to the ways of the world. We're going to follow heaven's ways. Remember, you are now born from above. You're to seek the things that are above, and you are now going to set your mind, your affection on the things above, not on the things on the earth. You are to walk according to heaven's ways. Set your will that you're never going to go back to the ways of the world. It's astounding how Christians, they haven't done this, and they end up backsliding in the ways of the world. What did it do for you? It just took you down a path of destruction. Look at all the things that happened, all the evil spirits that came in, and how it brought so much destruction. We need to choose to never go back into the ways. Otherwise, we should never backslide. There'd be no reason to ever backslide. We have our eyes on the Lord and following Him always. Galatians chapter 4, verse 9. Or verse, yeah, verse 9. Here, remember the Galatian church is the one who was turning back towards walking after the Old Testament law, which is a mistake. He said, now after you've known God, they had revelation, they had been born again, rather are known of God, they were even known of Him because they were doing the Word for a season. How turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements wherein to you desire again to be in bondage, going back into the ways of the flesh and the Old Testament laws? That's a mistake. And he said, you observe days and months and times and years. That's what they did in the Old Testament. Instead, we understand these are all types and shadows of the spiritual realities of what Jesus has accomplished in some of the feasts and the other ones that are going to be accomplished. We don't observe these things. Instead, we see what they all point towards. And they also point towards the work of God being accomplished in our life. But they were all caught up in observing days and months and times and years. That's a mistake. That was the wrong thing. He said, I'm afraid of you, lest I bestowed upon you labor in vain. You guys went right back into the ways of the flesh, in the ways of the Old Testament law. What a mistake. We cannot do that. We see over in Luke, chapter 12. In Luke chapter 12, it's speaking of those who did what God wanted, and it's speaking of those who were not doing what God wanted. It speaks here about a servant. Luke 12, 47, that servant which knew his Lord's will. That meant he knew the word, he knew what God wanted him to do, but he prepared not himself. Because remember, you've got to get prepared to do the will of God through getting the word in you and getting your will set that you're going to do what he wants. And of course, then neither did according to his will. The things that God teaches you he expects you to take hold of it, incorporate it into your life. That's getting you prepared for doing the things He wants. And when He finds that you are ready and prepared because you have done what's necessary, then He will take you into what He has for you. Well, these guys didn't get prepared, and of course they didn't do according to His will. What happened? They're going to be beaten with many stripes. They're not going to hear, well done now, good and faithful servant. <laughs> No, they're going to be punished because they did not do the will of the Lord. Set your mind, set your will. You're going to choose to find out the Lord's will through the knowledge of God, prepare yourself in all ways to do everything He wants, and then carry it out. Do it. Do the will of God in every situation. 1 Peter chapter 4. In verse 2, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh 
to the loss of, to the loss of men, but to the will of God. We can't live according to the loss of men in the flesh. You're to live unto God. You're to do everything unto Him. That means you can't be doing it to what the desires of men, that what they want you to do. If somebody wants you to do something that's contrary to the Word, no. You're going to live to the will of God. You're not going to do what somebody, some man wants you to do if it's not in line with the Word. You're only going to do what the Word says. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles or the nations when they did do all kind of wrong things. They walked in lasciviousness, lust, excessive wine, revelings, banquetings, abominable idolatries. They did all these things. Well, now, you should be always living to the will of God. So set your will. You're always going to do what is right. You're going to choose the will of God in every situation. How am I going to know that? You're going to think what the Word says. How am I going to know that? Because you're going to get the knowledge of God, the Word in you, and keep the Word in you, and that's what you keep before you, so that then you choose to do the will of God. You're always going to live to the will of God and not to any strong desires of men trying to lead you astray contrary to the Word. Absolutely no necessity. Now, if we don't do what God wants, it will, it will be, judgments will certainly come. We've already seen some. Exodus 10, verse 27. The Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. He would not let them go. Why? Because Pharaoh wouldn't let him go. He didn't, wasn't willing to let them go when he said he was going to, and God told him to let him go. He wouldn't do it. A hardening of heart will occur. There's scriptures that talks about how Pharaoh hardened his heart, and here was about the Lord hardened his heart. If you won't choose the way of the Lord, you're going to harden your heart. You see, sin is always going to cause a hardening of heart. It's not just something well, I just committed sin, I can confess that everything will be fine. No, it's taken a toll upon you. Hebrews 3.13 says, Exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin takes a toll on you. It affects you in your heart it will cause a hardening. We cannot allow our heart to get hardened. That's how people begin to backslide. That's how begin people to begin to turn away from the things of God and, and not follow what He wants. They get negative attitudes and so forth. They get hardened towards these things. What a mistake. Sin will do that. That's why you cannot allow any sin to be operating in your life. Leviticus chapter 26 also tells us the results if we continue in sin. Leviticus 26, 21, If you walk contrary to me and will not hearken unto me, they won't obey, they won't choose, they won't set their will to do what's right, I'll bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I mean, they were going to already get plagues, and now he's talking about seven times more because they would not set their will to obey. God wants you to obey. It's a way to blessings. Remember, if you obey, blessings are going to come on you. But if you rebel, it's not going to happen. Remember the scripture we have looked at in the past, but we'll bring it up again. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19, if you be willing and obedient, not just going through the motions because I ought to or I have to or I should, that's no good. You're not going to get anywhere willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the lamb. But what happens if the guy refuses and rebels? He's going to be devoured with a sword. Judgment's going to come. God expects you and I to choose the way of the Lord at all times and do what He says for us to do. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 1. We pick up here in verse 25. This is talking about when they went and they saw the fruit. Remember the 12 spies went and referring back to what happened. They took of the fruit of the land and their hands brought it down to us, brought us word again, said it's a good land which the Lord our God has given us. That's right. But what happened? Notwithstanding, you would not go up but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. 
And you murmured in your tents and said, Because the Lord hated us, he had brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us in the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Of course, God didn't bring them for that. But that also shows you, if you don't obey God, what's going to happen? You're going to be, your mind's going to get distorted and you're going to be thinking the wrong things. Not only did they rebel against the commandment of God, now they're griping, murmuring against him, and now they're getting convinced that the Lord hated us and he's going to deliver us in the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. No way. Otherwise, you'll get a distorted outlook and your mind will get corrupted. You can't afford to, to rebel. It will, you'll have a corrupted mind out of it because you'll have been choosing something else. And that's why their mind was corrupted. They got a negative attitude. You cannot allow that to happen to you in your life. We must guard ourselves. 1 Samuel chapter 8. Set your will to choose to do the will of God. Well, these are the ones who, they didn't want to follow the prophet's commands and tell them what to do. And so they wanted to have a king over them like all the other nations. So they'd go out and fight their battles because they didn't want to fight. They wanted to be like the nations. <laughs> What a mistake. 1 Samuel 8, 5, he said, Behold, thou art old, thy sons walk not in the ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Well, it's true. The sons weren't walking right. Nonetheless, God would have raised up someone else after Samuel, and there wasn't any reason for them to want to go this way. It really showed the intent of their heart. They didn't want to follow the word of God whatsoever. And they want somebody else to fight their battles for them. They wanted to be like the nations. <laughs> The thing displeased Samuel, and they said, Give us a king to judge us. Now, you have to understand, if you make wrong choices, God will let you have what you want. He's not going to make you choose the right way. Samuel prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. They've not rejected thee, but they've rejected me, that I should not reign over them. That's the real ball game. I don't, they didn't want God's rule over them. God will let you choose what you want, even if it's wrong, because he's not going to make you choose the right thing. These people that think, so I wonder why God allowed me to choose this way or do such and such. You can't put the blame on God that he allowed you to make this choice. If you made a choice, you made the choice. <laughs> what am I, God allowed this to happen to me? People say that kind of stuff all the time. That's the old, bull shift the blame on God, you know. It can't be my fault. It has got to be God. It's ridiculous. He's never the problem. If we made wrong choices or things happen because of our wrong choices, there's nobody more responsible than ourselves because we have authority over our will and we have a choice. And we are to set ourselves to choose the way of the Lord and do what is right. If not, we'll see nothing but trouble. And of course, that's what happened to them. Nevertheless, the people, even after he told them all the things that were going to happen to them, this is what the king is going to do. They're going to take all your, 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 uh, your money and they're going to make all your, your ser the, everybody servants, you know, the, your daughters are going to be confectionaries and bakers. And they're all going to be forced to do all this. <laughs> and the people still refused to obey the voice of Samuel and they said, nay, but we will have a king over us. That shows you that you wonder why would people make such a dumb choice? It's because they don't want God's rule and they'll get deceived in their mind and they will make wrong choices. We see it happen with people all the time. Why would you do such a thing? And look what it caused you. <laughs> because they were rebelling against God. You rebel against God, you're going to get a distorted effect in your mind. And that's what these guys have. You think, if after telling them all the things were going to happen, they should have said, okay, we're not, we don't want that. No, they still wanted it. All they cared about was, we don't want God's reign over us. And if you won't submit to the word of God, remember, that makes us rebellious, and that means we're not wanting to follow the way of the Lord. That's a mistake. Look at Hosea 4, verse 6. Many people quote this, and they only quote this. They say, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, period. That's all they say. I needed knowledge, so I got destroyed because I didn't have knowledge. Well, wait a minute, we got to read the rest of this. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. That's why it came to them, but they kicked it out. They rejected it. 
So what's God going to do? Remember, he's going to treat you the way you treat him. You reject knowledge, he's going to reject you. And that's exactly what he does. That's just, see. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. And notice also, I will also forget thy children. It will carry over to the Tyre household. Hmm. Trouble will come. You've got to make the right choice to put the word of God first place. How are all households to work? According to the word of God, the knowledge of God's to be run in your household. That's the way you live. You can't be rejecting that and think that you're going to see a blessing coming upon you. No, he's going to reject you. And it'll even carry over to your children and your household. We can't allow that to happen. God expects us to choose right. In fact, look over at 2 Thessalonians. When the Antichrist is coming on the scene, we see in verse 9, he's going to be the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And notice what it says then. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness, and them that are perishing, this means, it's because it's present tense, though that means there they took hold of the unrighteousness. Because they received not the love of the truth, if they had the love of the truth, they'd be doing the word that they might be saved, or for their being saved. I mean, if you don't receive the word, you're not going to be saved. And then it even goes on and says, for this cause God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, not a lie, it's a mistake. It's the lie. Here it is in the Greek. The definite article, lie. What's the lie that's going to come? But the Antichrist is God. It's a lie. They'll believe it. Why? Because that they all might be judged who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And they followed after the signs and wonders, lying signs and wonders. You can't do that. You've got to put the Word of God first place. And you can't have pleasure and unrighteousness whatsoever. You've got to choose to walk in the way of the Lord. Put the Word of God first place in all that you do. Set your will. I will never walk in the ways of unrighteousness. I will always have the love of the truth ready to do the word. And I'm not going to walk in unrighteousness. I'm going to walk in righteousness at all times. We also need to obey God in all things. We can't be just halfway obey him and do some of the things he wants us to do and think that it's going to be okay. Remember that God spoke to Saul and told him through Samuel that he was supposed to go and he was supposed to destroy all the Amalekites and everything that they had, destroy the whole deal. They didn't. Samuel for, for Samuel 15, 19, Therefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. They didn't do everything, which was a mistake. He tried to say he obeyed the voice of the Lord, but he didn't. They were supposed to destroy them all. Instead, he brought Agag, the king of Amalek, which was wrong. They were supposed to all be destroyed and utterly destroyed them all. He didn't. And furthermore, then, they weren't supposed to bring any of the other things of the spoil. They are supposed to destroy the whole deal, but they didn't. If you're not willing to do all that God says and you only do part of it, are you going to be approved? No. You're not going to be approved. What was the end result for him? He lost the kingdom. We see it over in 1 Samuel 28, verse 17. The Lord hath done to him as he spake to me, for the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand, given it to thy neighbor, even to David, because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. If you don't obey God, you do it your way instead of who in his way. You won't rule and reign. He lost the kingdom. God expects you to follow him. Remember, who's calling the shots? He is. We're not making the decisions. We're just being the vessel for, to be obedient to do what he says for us to do. Whatever he says to do, you do it. You carry it out. Because they didn't, he lost his kingdom, which means if you don't do what he says, you won't be ruling and reigning. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. 
My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they try to get you to yield to them, to deceive you, to entice you, don't be willing to do it. Be not willing. Otherwise, you've got to set your will. I'm going to resist. Anybody trying to pull me in some direction, I know that's not right. Enticing you, trying to deceive you or pull you off in this way, no way. Get you to compromise, get you to make an excuse, oh, it's okay this time. No, it's not. It's never okay to sin. You consent not. You say, yet your will, no way. Be, take a stand. Get your will set. I'm not going to be uh, walking in the ways of sin or compromise. Amen. Verse 25. But you've said it not all my counsel, and with none of my, willing to have none of my reproof. What's that tell you? The guy wasn't correctable. If you're not correctable, you're going to see the same thing. Calamities are going to come. You're not going to be blessed. You're not going to pass God's test. You set your will. I'm ready to receive the correction if it's true correction in line with the Word of God. And I'm ready to do it and put it in operation in my life. And then in verse 30, about the counsel that was brought to them. They, would, they willed, this is willing, they're willing of none of my counsel. They didn't want my counsel. Some people don't, won't want to listen to the counsel. That means they're rebellious against God. The counsel of the Word of God, when it comes to you, if it's in line with the Word of God, you need to take heed to the counsel that's brought unto you. Receive the counsel of God. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 9. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Means if, if, if you don't want to hear the law of the Lord, that makes us rebellious. That means we're not obedient. We've got to set our will that we are going to hear the law of the Lord. We're all want, we want to hear the word of God. And some people just, they, well, I've had people say, well, I don't like hearing about that. What do you mean you don't like hearing about that? Is this the word of God? Yes, it is. <laughs> well, since when do you decide what you want to hear and what you don't want to hear of the word of God? What a mistake. Those people are in trouble. Verse 15. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, and returning in rest shall you be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Telling them what would solve their problems and get what they need. But what happened? You willed not. You were willing not to do it. You would not. You weren't willing. You weren't willing to do what needed to be done. When God presents something to you, it's to show you the way. We've got to be willing, set our will. Yes, I'm ready to do what you've brought to me to tell me the right way that's going to produce the salvation, can produce my strength, produce all the things that are necessary. And they weren't willing to do it. What a mistake. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 24, look what he says. He gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers. Why? That was a judgment that came upon him. They were just given over into the enemy's hands. Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? That's right. You sinned, you don't think there's going to be any repercussions? <laughs> he's going to give you over to the hands of the enemy. The devils are going to come in and they're going to, the robbers are going to do a job on you. For they would not, they willed not to walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Obedience and being willing. Remember, if you're willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. You refuse and rebel, you're going to be destroyed. Some judgment will come. And here's there's the spoil, and the robbers came. And they saw destruction. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 5. See, we've got to set our will against making mistakes. Not only choosing the right way, but making sure we don't choose the wrong way. Isaiah 50, verse 5. The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. God opens your ear and brings revelation. Now what? You choose to obey and carry it out and do it. Again, well, he opens your ear and brings revelation to you. Eh, I don't think so. I'm going to go this other direction. <laughs> That's a rejection of the knowledge of God and what he's bringing to you. He opened and brought revelation to him. 
And yet he, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to turn away back. You're going to be judged. You think you're going to get more revelation? If you rejected one thing, you brought a revelation, you wouldn't do it? Well, I don't want that, but hey, I want revelation over here on this. You're not going to get anything. You've got to walk in the revelation he brings you and hearken unto him. We can't be rebellious and turn back when he's opened your ear and brought revelation to you. So set your mind and your will. When God brings revelation to me, I'm ready to take hold of it, do it, incorporate it in my lifestyle, and carry it out. I will be a doer of the word. Mandatory. Jeremiah 3.11, the Lord said to me, the backsliding Israel's justified herself more than treacherous, treacherous Judah. Always trying to backslide him for all the reasons of why they're not doing the word of God. <laughs> it never will work. Anytime you're trying to justify why you're not doing the word, there's something wrong with you because you haven't submitted to the word. You haven't set your will to choose to do the word. Otherwise, you wouldn't be rejecting it, and then you wouldn't be trying with pride trying to justify why it's okay for me. My circumstance, this thing, I'm tired. I can't do this. I don't feel good. I, I don't think I want to do that. You know, I got other things I got to do. You know, all these kind of things. <laughs> it's not going to work. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return. Now backsliding is, Repent, saith the Lord and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. I mean, God's a merciful God. He wants to forgive us. He wants to restore us. He wants us to get on board on what's right. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I'll not keep my anger forever. He's, his mercies are new every morning. They're only going to come to those people that meet the conditions, you know. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and scattered the, the, thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. They were fallen back into idolatry, and you have not obeyed my voice. Repentance, and then obeying his voice and walking in the way of the Lord. That is what God wants. We've got to choose the way of the Lord. Chapter 7, verse 23. This thing commanded I them, Obey my voice, and I'll be your God. Notice, obeying the voice is before he's going to be your God. If you, I want God to do something for me, yet you don't obey him, he's not going to do it. And you shall be my people. Walk in all the ways that I've commanded you, that it may be well with you. If you're not walking in all the ways that he commanded you, can you expect that it's going to be well with you? Can you believe that promise and, and declare that promise is going to be well with you? No. So you need to set your will. I will obey the voice of the Lord. I will walk in all the ways that he's commanded me. And I thank him and I know that it will be well with me because he's a performer of his word because I met the conditions. See, that's how you know what God will do. You'll know exactly what he'll do when you've met the conditions and done it. He is a performer of his word. Remember, he watches over his word to perform it. What happened? They hearkened not. They didn't incline their ear. They didn't want to hear anymore. Walked in the counsels, imaginations, their evil heart, and they went backward and not forward. You're always to go forward, not backward. We're not going to compromise and go backward. We're not going to give any excuses to go backward or turn to the right or turn to the left. No. We're going forward. We're going forward in the things of God, and we're going to follow Him and be obedient to Him. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them, yet they hearkened not to me. Shows you why they got such a judgment coming upon them. They continually reject, rejected Him, yet nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. Hmm, causes a hardening. And they did worse than their fathers. Well, that even shows you. What does that mean? More demons came into them or driving them to do even more evil things because you'll be worse off. Remember, he says, go and sin no more. That's the worst thing come on here. If you get the demons cast out and you don't do what he wants you to do, seven more wicked's going to come in and you'll be doing worse. It's the same effect. They wouldn't obey. Disobedience, well, you'll be doing worse. You'll have worse things happen if you don't choose to obey and do the things God says. Set your will that you're going to obey God's word so that you can see God's blessings come to you. 
Verse 28, Thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeys not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receives correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Well, they're in trouble for sure. And when he says, cut off thine hair, it's not, hair is a bad translation. It's the word here, Nazar, which means the crown. It's a referring to the Nazaritis, uh, Nazarite separation and crown that would come upon him. Cut off thy crown and O oh, Jerusalem and cast it away and take up a lamentation on high place for the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. That's right. You're not going to have any crown. <laughs> You're going to be judged. Destruction is going to come. Why? Because they wouldn't obey the voice of the Lord. They wouldn't receive correction. Just think, all the people that don't want to obey the word or they don't want to receive correction when the word's brought to them, they're in trouble. They're going to see judgments the same way. It's going to happen. Look at Ezekiel. Again, these are things that we're talking about that you've got to set your will that you're not going to let happen to you. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 7. The house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will, they're not willing, to hearken unto me. Of course, he's saying they're not hearkening to you, talking about Ezekiel. Why? Because they don't want to hearken unto me. They don't want to follow God. You taught them the word. I wonder why they aren't doing the word. Well, it's not you. It's God they don't want to follow after. Don't take it personally yourself or don't think that you should have listened to what I said. You're just a vessel, remember, a spokesman. If they reject the things you're saying, what are they really rejecting? They're rejecting the Lord. They're rejecting what he said. All the house of Israel are impotent. You're, they were stout against him and hard-hearted. We can't allow that in our life. Exodus 20, verse 8. They rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me, willing, not willing to hearken unto me. They did not, they did not every man cast away the abomination of their eyes, Neither they forsake the idols of Egypt, the things of the world, all the things they were seeing with their eyes, they shouldn't be having seeing. Then I said, I'll pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. They're going to see judgment. See, God is a righteous God. There's the goodness of God and there's the severity of God, which is the judgment that comes because of not following the way of the Lord. Again, I've had these people say, well, you know, God's good. God's good all the time. God is good. God is good all the time. No, he's righteous all the time. He's good when you're doing what needs to happen, what's what, what, walking right. But if not, there'll be judgment is not a good thing that is happening. But nonetheless, God is a righteous God all the time. Remember, don't fall for that thing. They should have cast that song away and burnt that thing long ago. And yet people still talk about it. God is good all the time. God is good. It's a lie. Look at, behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God. Well, that means he's not good all the time. Right? <laughs> on them which fell, severity. On thee, goodness. If you continue in his goodness. Otherwise, you also shall be cut off. What is God all the time? Righteous. And he always does what is right. According to his word, he will always perform it. That is the truth. We must understand that he is always righteous. Now also, you've got to always set your will that you're going to choose to forgive anybody who might have hurt you or wronged you. In Matthew chapter 18, this is where the man had this great debt and the king forgave him of that great debt. And then there was someone who owed him a small debt and he wouldn't forgive him. He refused to forgive him that debt and he put him in prison. Well, what was the result on that? And the Lord, he comes before the Lord. His Lord, after he'd called him, said to him, Oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant even as I had pity on thee? No, you can't do that. So what happens to him? The Lord was wrought, delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due him. 
And now, what is that? what's that have to do with us? So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. You've got to set your will that I'm going to forgive. Don't hold anything against any brother. This is talking about a brother, remember. Always forgive. Choose to forgive. Choose to let it go. Do not harbor unforgiveness or else you're going to see destruction. You're going to be, turn, you're going to be turned over to the tormentors, which are the demons. The demons will come into you. Remember, why would you hold unforgiveness against them? Because you're mad about it and you want to see a judgment against them and you want, you're going to hold them accountable for what they did to you. Well, that's wrong. Who's the judge? God's the judge. Will they be judged for what they did? Yes, they will. What do you want? You want them to come to repentance, not judgment. Judge not, lest you be judged. Remember, whatever you give out to others, it's coming back to you. I've got to be willing to forgive. If I'm in unforgiveness, I'm not going to be right with God, and I'm going I'm to have all the, be turned over into the tormentors. And it's got to be a genuine one from your heart, not just going through the motions because I have to do it. Okay, that's not going to get you anywhere. You forgive from the heart because you know it's the right thing to do, see. You're going to do the right thing in the sight of the Lord. Galatians chapter 3. Set your will to always do the right thing. Always forgive. Always let go of resentment, bitterness, any kind of negative attitudes. Galatians chapter 3. He says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? They quit obeying the truth because they went back in the Old Testament law before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. They said, oh, verse 3, are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? No way. It's only in spirit. But then he comes there in verse 5. He says, he that ministered to you the spirit and worked miracles among you, did he do it by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith? It wasn't by the works of the law. It was all by the hearing of faith. He's trying to reason with them the way of the law and the Old Testament way and the way, as a way after the flesh produces no good results. In fact, it was a law of condemnation, of condemnation and death that brought destruction. And then he comes to chapter 5, verse 7. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? That means if you're not obeying the truth like you did once, what happened? Who got to you? What got to you? You were. You were running the race well. We should be continuing it. If we are not doing what we once did, somebody got to you. It was the devil through some means that you should not obey the truth. God wants us to always obey the truth and do what is right in his sight. Absolutely. We see another scripture over in 2 Timothy. Chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, it speaks about, in verse 24, how when we're ministering to someone who's been overtaken by the enemy. Verse 24, the servant of the Lord must not strive. You don't get in strife when you're talking to people. But be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, and patient or forbearing. Again, you're not going to be judgmental, remember. In meekness, with a gentleness and a mildness, not a hammer holding it over their head, beating them down. No, with a gentleness and mildness, instructing those that oppose themselves, that aren't walking right, they're walking in the wrong path. If God peradventure will give them repentance, change of mind, to the not acknowledging as a, ver, as a participle, it is a noun, precise, correct knowledge, it means. Otherwise, give them a change of mind to the price precise, correct knowledge of the truth. This is a noun here. Here is the word. It's a noun, not a participle, which would be the, what that would be like, or the ing on the back of it. It shouldn't have been that way. To the precise, correct knowledge of the truth. So what's going to happen if they change their mind and come to the precise, correct knowledge of the truth? Well, now they're, they're coming, they're going to change their ways, and they're going to start doing what's right. That's what they need. So you want to give them the word to help them to come to the truth so they change their mind, so they come out of the status they're in, 
which is a, leading them down a destructive path, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. That means the devil can take you captive at his will if you're not walking according to the knowledge of God, meaning you're walking in sin. Well, and if you find someone that way, you don't jump down their throat. You're going to, with meekness, instructing those to come to the place of changing their mind, presenting the word to them so they will come to the place of the precise, correct knowledge of God, of the truth, change their mind. So then they recover themselves. Remember, you're not going to get them out of it. Everybody's got to recover themselves. Well, just pray for me and get this problem off of my life. Well, you're going to give them the word of God and bring them to the place of the true, correct knowledge precise, correct knowledge of the truth. So now they can change their way and they get to recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. You can be ministering to them and helping them, but they have to recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. You're not going to be able to pray and get rid of their problem if they aren't involved, haven't met all the conditions and get right to recover themselves. That's important. But remember, you're going to minister to people with meekness. You're going to minister to them in the right way to share the word of God with them so they can come to the place of, of coming to the place of repentance. Now remember, judgment is coming to the church before it comes to the world. 1 Peter 4, 17. The time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, the church. If it first in time begin at us, what shall the end of them be end be of them obeying not? This is a present tense. What's going to happen to those that are not obeying ongoingly the gospel of God? They're in trouble. Are you going to be blessed? No. Are you going to be saved? No. Are you going to be protected? No. Are you going to be right with God? No. He goes on and says, and if the righteous, and who are the righteous? The ones that are doing the word of righteousness, that are born again, that are doing the word of righteousness. They have the fruits of righteousness. They're, remember, the righteousness produces holiness, so they're going to be the holy ones. Not with difficulty and not easily, because they have to conquer anything coming out against them. Are being saved present tense, ongoing action, and who's producing this result in them? You can't save yourself. God's doing it. Passive voice, meaning the subject is being acted upon by another who is God. Are being saved by God's work in your life because you're walking in line with the word of righteousness. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner, the sinful one? This means this sinful one because it's an adjective. That's why it's a sinful or sinful one. Oh, they're in trouble. We're to walk in the ways of righteousness. We can't walk in the ways of sin. We can't be one of those ones that are walking. Remember the ones who had pleasure in unrighteousness? They were, that was all over for them. And how about the guys that walk in lawlessness? They're going to be in trouble as well. The lawlessness is increasing and it's going to increase continually as we go down these days. You cannot allow any lawlessness in your life. Look what it says in Matthew 24, 12, because this iniquity is the word anomia, meaning lawlessness. Because lawlessness shall abound. That means they're not walking after God's laws of the New Testament, the law of Christ. Uh, that now they're walking however they want. Because lawlessness shall abound, and many people think, well, I can just do anything I want. In fact, many Christians think that we are not under any law. That's a lie. You're under the law of Christ. You're under all the commandments of Jesus Christ. They think they can do anything they want. What's going to happen? The love of many shall wax cold. People have tried to say, well, this is talking about the Jews. No, it's not. How do you know? Because it's the love. And what is the word love? Agape. Who has the agape love? Only born-again Christians. Not anybody of the world who's not born again. And notice the love of many. This isn't the few. The few are the ones who are walking the straight and narrow path. The many are the ones that are not walking that way. 
the love of many shall wax cold if lawlessness abounds in your life it will cause your love for God to become cold and if the lukewarm gets spewed out what's going to happen to the cold <laughs> it's all over because they're not right with God you and I must choose the way of the Lord and set our will that we're going to do what is right in his sight Philippians chapter 2 what are we commanded to do we set our will we're going to do what God says and what are we doing when we're doing that? Wherefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out, perform, accomplish, achieve your own salvation with fear and trembling. See, you have a part to play by your choice to do what the Word says. And this is a command to you and me, imperative mood, it also is a present tense, meaning that would be translated, I'm commanding you to continually be working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And how do you accomplish it? Always obeying the word of God. That's what put God, puts God in, in operation. Because it's God who's working in you to will and do of his good pleasure because you're doing the word. And that's what's going to bring forth the accomplishment of the salvation that you are working out by being obedient in all things. Also, Jesus had to do what was necessary just as you, you and I have to do. He just didn't come and then not have to do the things that we needed to do. No. Hebrews 5, 8, look what it says. Though he were a son, he learned, lear yet learned he obedience by the things he suffered. Everything that came at him, he had to obey the word of God and do what was right. And he learned obedience by the things he suffered because he did it. You're going to learn obedience by hearing and doing the word and setting your will to always do the word of God. If you don't, you haven't learned obedience yet. You're going to learn it because you set your will to do what's right. And look what it says after this. Being made perfect, which is what happened to him, and that's what's going to happen to you and me as we come to the same place. We're going to go on to perfection. Being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. For who? Everybody who was just born again, and that's all? Didn't matter what you did in your life? No. Unto all them that are obeying ongoingly, present tense, him. Jesus obeyed, you and I obey. He set his will to do everything, and he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. You're going to do the same. You're going to overcome all temptations, every attack of the enemy, anything that's presenting itself to try to get you to choose to not do what the Word says. He's the author of eternal salvation to all those who are obeying him. That is what must happen for you and me in our life. Hebrews 13, verse 20. The God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect. Come to the place of being sound, complete, and mended. He'll restore everything that's happened to you. Total restoration in all things. In every good work to do His will. Working in you that which is well-pleasing in His sight. He will. He'll accomplish it. Because of what? Doing His will. In every good work to do His will. I mean, you do the Word, the work's being done. that will be well-pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ. You're going to come to that place of being restored, healed, perfected, mended, in your life. And that's what he wants for every single one. In fact, you got to set your will if you're really a part of the family of God. Look what it says in Mark chapter 3, verse 35. Whosoever shall do the will of God, the same as my brother and my sister and mother. Well, that's his family. It's more than just receiving Jesus and getting born again. It's then learning the Word 
doing the will of God by doing what the Word, setting your will, I'm going to do what the Word says always. That is his brother, sister, and mother. That's his family. You and I, you think, well, I got born again. I came into the family of God. Well, yeah, you did at that point because you have the same spirit. But only those who do the will of God continually will be in the family at the end. Those who don't do it, they aren't going to be right what's with, God, with God whatsoever. Remember these scriptures. 1 John 3, 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. And why would anything say about being deceived? Because God in his foreknowledge knows the false teaching about this subject that's going forth in the body of Christ, including in these last days. It's been going on for a long time. That you're perfectly righteous when you're born again, which is a lie. You have a righteous spirit. Notice what he said. He that doeth, this is a present tense, is doing ongoingly righteousness is righteous. You mean it's more than just being born again? Yeah. You get a righteous spirit, and what do you have a righteous spirit? So you can now walk in the way of righteousness and do righteousness and live a righteous life, live a godly life. Since when would you get a brand new spirit and then live an ungodly life and think that that's going to be acceptable to God? That's crazy. Even as he is righteous. And then this verse, of course, is real important. In this, the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Whoever, whosoever doeth ongoingly is not doing continually righteousness is not of God. You mean to tell me somebody can be born again and walking in all kinds of unrighteousness and lawlessness, and God says, you're not of God. That's right. <laughs> Neither he that loveth not his brother. Remember the guy who hates his brother, he didn't have an eternal life dwelling in him. Well, obviously, it's talking about someone who's born again. It's not loving his brother, remember. We come down to verse 14 and 15. He that loveth not his brother, he's abiding in death. Well, there's no eternal life in that. He's in trouble. Whoever hates his brother, he's a murderer. And you know, no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Boy, the one saved, always saved, teaching has deceived the multitudes. It's a lie from the pit of hell, from the devil. You and I must set our will that we're going to walk in his ways. Look also at what it says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 17. And remember, if we back up and we see it's talking about love not the world, do the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You can't have both. This world is a world that's going to be eliminated, remember. It's full of sin, full of destruction. God's going to bring a new heavens and a new earth in, remember. Any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him because all the ways of the world are not in line with the Word of God. And then he goes on and says, for all that's in the world, and how does it operate? The lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, it's not of the Father, it's of the world. But then he says, the world passed away and the lust thereof, but he that is doing the will of God abides forever. And when it talks about doing, this is ongoingly. So that means it's imperative that I set my will and you set your will, that I'm going to choose to do the Word of God so I'm following the will of God all the time. What does the Word say? That's what I'm going to do. That is what He wants for every single one of us. It's mandatory. We'll look at two other passages of Scripture. Romans chapter 2 tells you something really important. Verse 5. After thy hardness and impenitent, it means unrepentant heart, treasure up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Who are these ones? The ones that were judging others and think they were going to escape the judgment of God. We come to verse 6. He says, Who will render to every man according to his deeds... 
Well, it means all the things you're doing is having an effect on how he's going to look at you. To them who by patient or steadfastness in good works, is literally what it says, of a good work, seeks for glory and honor and immortality and eternal life. Why? Because he's, they're being steadfast in doing the word, doing what's right. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth. If you don't obey the truth, what are you doing? But they're obeying unrighteousness. Well, what's going to happen to the guy who's obeying unrighteousness ongoingly? He's going to get indignation and wrath and tribulation and anguish. <laughs> That's judgment, big time. Glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good. The Jew first and also the Gentile. The gospel came to them first and the Gentiles. It comes to all, for all of us if, if we're doing what's good in the sight of the Lord. And remember, there's no respect to persons with God. God has no respect to persons. He looks at each one of us and sees whether it's, he's examining us about whether or not we are coming in line with his word, walk in line with his word or not. You and I need to be doing what the Word says. One last scripture that we started with and we'll conclude with. And this is the bottom line. Obedience is mandatory in all our lives. You need to set your will that you're going to choose to do the Word of God. Period. That's it. That's how you're going to go on to perfection. That's how you're going to see God accomplish His great work. That's, God, that's how God is going to bring you to the place of also, it's really the proving of you whether you're going to be approved or not. To this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you. What's the proof of you when you've been tried, when you've been approved, when you've been you checked, yeah, take a good look at you? It's whether you be obedient in all things. He's given you a will. He's not going to make you choose. He's not going to make you be obedient. He's told you what to do. He's given you and I free will. Set before us life and death, blessing and cursing. We're going to choose. We're going to choose the way of the Lord. Put God first place. Set your will that I'm going to choose to do what the Word says in every situation. So you're going to you're not going to react according to situations. You're going to think what the Word says before you do something, before you speak, before you do whatever you act, whatever it might be. That is what we must do. The proof of you is whether you're obedient in all things. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God that makes it very clear that I am to set my will to choose to do the Word of God in every situation and show forth that I'm obedient in all things. I will have passed the test. I will see the blessings of God. I will be approved of God. I thank you that I am setting my will to choose to obey and to do what the Word of God says in every situation. I will not compromise. I will not turn any other way. I will do what the Word says. And I thank you. I know you are testing me. I know you're looking at me to find out if I'm approved. And the evidence is that I'm obedient in all things. So I will be obedient in all things. Thank you for accomplishing this great work in my life and bringing forth perfection because I hear and do the word. And I will see your blessings coming on me and overtaking me in all areas of my life. Thank you. I commit to set my will to choose to do the word of God and to be obedient in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Father, thank you for all you brought forth. Thank you. We'll be hearers and doers of this word. And we will be showing the proof that we're obedient in all things. Thank you for all you accomplish. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.